Hey guys, welcome back to Real Housewives Recaps. Today, we're back in the writer's room. You guys, the response I have gotten from the first couple of episodes of this that I put out has been incredible. A lot of you have asked me to keep going, so here we are. Also, I put out a video a few days ago talking about we're going to do a live chat on Thursday evening. I figured it'll be same day that the episode comes out. If you guys want to jump on and chat with me, I will be there. I'm planning for 7 p.m. Eastern time. The way that works is I put up a video, another video of reviews that people have left. I put up, I'll put up a lot. It'll be a longer one this time so we can chat our way through it. And it's free. It's part of YouTube. All you have to do is just click the link you would normally click to watch. There'll be a countdown there till, till we go live and we start chatting. So join me. Talk to me. I want to hear all of your thoughts. So if you want to hear the uninterrupted podcast, it's in Just Like That, The Writer's Room. On this channel, I do reactions and I pause a lot and we talk through it. It's like we're sitting together and talking I talk to you. You guys talk back to me in the comments. So let's pick up where we left off. They're interviewing Samantha Irby. She is there to discuss the first two episodes. She's one of the writers of the show. Also, the man speaking is Michael Patrick King. Uh, he's been involved since the beginning. And we have Julie Rottenberg and Elisa Zuritsky. Can I ask Sam? I'm curious. What did you? What was your first reaction? when Michael told you that that's what he was going to do on this show? Well, during my interview, um, after Michael said I was wearing an ugly shirt. No, I said you were wearing, I said you were wearing a grade school. You guys, they just want to show us how hilarious they are. Do you, if you're not, if you're not believing it, they'll throw in the over the top laughter. Kids t-shirts. Yeah, like a Garanimals. <laughs> a Garanimals. You, you heard ugly. You just projected that's, ugly That's onto your that. shame I spot. Waste no time. No, I First of all, so- When he told me during that interview, I was like, oh, great. That was like my one stipulation. Not that I would have a real stipulation, but uh, that I would need to work on the show because I didn't understand what we would be seeing Big and Carrie doing. Ah, ding, 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 ding. You guys, that's what it is. Lazy writing. And I'm not just blaming her. I'm blaming them all. They couldn't come up with good ideas. So, hey, let's just kill them off. That way we don't have to write the you know, complexities of having a, a marriage on screen. Even over the course of like two episodes, let alone a whole season, so when when he told me that he was going, I was like, "Great, let's do it." I, I to me, I, it is the the entire center of the whole show, and then we built out from that, and mm-hmm. it doesn't have anything to do with my feelings about Mr. Big or Chris Noth, who mm-hmm. I adore and uh, am incredibly grateful that he took one for the team. Oof, cringe. That didn't age well. Curious to see if he'd say the same thing now. Because he came back and did this for us, but it gives a real story where there where there would have been artifice, even though it's a fake death. Everybody, I just want to remind everybody, <laughs> it's fake, it's fictional. I was just when people say, come now at I me, I feel like an asshole for being so mean about no, it. No, you're no, it's all of you. You're all a bunch of out of touch, forced woke assholes. It's well, in. no, we actually no. put Samantha's point of view into that. the show in episode two. Somebody says exactly what Samantha said. Mm-hmm. But the fact of the matter is, what I love is that it's so real to people that it will be a shock. Mm-hmm. And I know it was the main reason Sarah Jessica wanted to play it, because it is daring and goes someplace beyond shoes. Why can't we have both? Yes, we want more substance than shoes, but we also want to see the shoes. Mm-hmm. When people think the show is about shoes, which is the lexicon, the whole thrust for like, and I love that people love shoes. It's fun as a writer. <laughs> it's just like Manola Blahnik, Manola Blahnik, yeah, Cosmos. It's it it's it's a it's style. It's great. Nobody wants to see depression, as Sam said. You guys, we are halfway through the series, and all they've given us is depression. People want to see people depressed in pretty things, <laughs> but the reality <laughs> is. <laughs> But we're not even getting the pretty things this go around. It's not about shoes. And if you've seen the show, 
And I hope you're not listening to this if you haven't, because <laughs> you've got I don't a know problem. Why you would... Listen, Captain Thrust, you don't have to be quite so condescending. Babe. Talk about fear of missing out. But the, the fact of the matter is, the thing about the shoes are, in his death, those romantic fairy tale Cinderella blue shoes that he put on her feet in the movie blow off her feet. I try not to go overboard, especially with the F word, because what if there's kids around? If there's kids around, might want to cover their ears for this. But all of these writers can fuck all the way off. This is ridiculous. And that says a lot. And I remember the day we shot, we shot both scenes. We shot her looking through that great shot you got of her looking through her shoes. And she says, hello, lovers. And then we also shot the death. The death. Oh, you guys are so deep. In the shower. And I remember you saying, Michael, those two scenes, they're this episode. It's both. It's both extremes. Mm-hmm. It's both. And mm-hmm. the death, when we filmed the death, Samantha wasn't there, but Julian, Elise, and I were, the first take was stunning. These guys are drinking their own Kool-Aid like I've never seen before. And by the way, the bathroom was built for that scene. I didn't want him against a shower wall. I wanted him open. I wanted it open. We made the most, we built the most decadent spa bathroom ever so that he could be open and exposed. So again, instead of thinking, hey, what would my audience like to see? I'm going to spoon feed you this garbage and tell you how great we are. And you're supposed to appreciate us for this. Is that what I'm getting from this podcast? That's kind of how it sounds to me. And we, we created a Peloton bike after much discussion with Chris. Chris is like, I'm not dying alone in, in a shower. shower. <laughs> yeah, that was the original Fuck plan. Fuck it. I'm not dying alone in a shower. And I think that what was interesting about our conversation is that Dying alone in a shower feels like an old man. Mm. And getting off a Peloton bike and having a heart attack feels like life. You guys, I've said it a lot because it's my one of my all-time favorite sayings. You can use it as needed in your daily life. But again, I think it applies here. Does it hurt your back to kiss your own ass like this? But when we filmed it, it was shocking to have to go through it. Of course, the actors went full on. I mean, Big died a lot. Every single time. And Carrie was wet and lifting him up. And he, Mm. lifting and lifting and lifting. And they were spent. The voices were gone. Her voice was gone. But for us watching it, I was terrified. Because I said to Julian and Elisa, this might be too much for the audience. It's too much awfulness for the audience. Please make it stop. And please don't say thrust again. And the version that you're seeing is the first version, the whole thrust, Mm -hmm. which was the most controlled Mm -hmm. and a little bit the most poetic. Mm -hmm. And I hope people aren't too mad that we took away. And it's not about Carrie and Big's happy ending. We took away their happy Mm -hmm. ending. And that's Mm -hmm. the thing I'm worried about with it. I don't think you guys were worried about the audience at all. I don't think you were even thinking about the audience. I think you just wanted to get your own agendas across that's the only thing that seems to be important to you. The fans. See, you, I remember you, you were like, this is not how I imagined it. And I was. Which is ironic because that's what all the reviews that are giving them one star are saying. It's like, wow, did you imagine it? I mean, we were all standing there. It was so upsetting to watch again and again, every single time. And you said, I think it was just faster. And that struggle that they go through is so, um, it's very painful. And that's what the joy of the difference between life and art is. You have no idea what toy is, and you clearly cannot ride it for shit. That we could decide how painful it is and pull back. And how about originally she wasn't even going to be there? Originally, way back in the day, mm. way, way, way back. No, he, no, she was going to be there, but he wasn't going to be alive. Right, right. that's right. Originally, uh, so this is where I want to know your comments. It's hard to wade through this bullshit, but um, on a serious note, I 
personally, even though I hate how this has all gone down, I hate all the writing. I am glad that they had her there, I guess, for that last moment, even though I was screaming at my TV to call 911 and she didn't. Another story, but um, leave me a comment below. Did you, did they do the right thing having her there? Should she have showed up later? What do you think would have been better? She was going to come home and find him dead. dead. And Chris said to me, and I understood it, I snapped. She was going to come home and find him dead. And I understood it in a second when Chris said it. He said, we need the last moment. It's silent, but we need to see each other. Mm. And I have to give her permission to go. Mm. And I was like, that's amazing. Because yeah. then she gets to actually have a last moment with him. Mm -hmm. Because then we don't allow that for the rest of the next right. nine mm -hmm. episodes. She never has mm -hmm. another moment with him. So why shouldn't she have that yeah. big moment? So I got to stop here because I'm running out of curse words in my vocabulary and I need to Google some things <laughs> and spend some time on Urban Dictionary to come up with new words for how cringy, terrible, awful... This whole writing team is and what an insane bubble they live in and everything else. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you make it fun. I appreciate it. Leave me comments. I love interacting, hearing your thoughts, that sort of thing. And I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.